the landing and recovery teams have been um, getting uh, ready to deploy out to the landing site once Starliner does touch down. And on Starliner's last flight, we landed at night in the darkness. So uh, this will really be the first time we'll have daylight views of the spacecraft after it re-enters and under the canopy of its parachutes. So it'll be a real sight um, for our teams there and for folks across the country. Um, our first time really to see Starliner coming down in broad daylight. We also heard that the crew on board the International Space Station is going to be watching landing. Uh, they, uh, of course, spent some quality time with Starliner since it docked to the station on Mar uh, May 20th and uh, saw it off earlier today. That's Sergei Korsakov, Oleg Artemiev, Denise Metiev, and uh, Chell Lindgren, Bob Hines, Jessica Watkins, and Samantha Cristoforetti. Once again, receiving uh, data from the Starliner now that it's passed through that plasma buildup. Everything going well as it makes its way across this uh, track that you can see heading towards a landing in the New Mexico desert. Teams on the ground reporting good trajectory. And there are our very first shots of Starliner from the WD-57. Starliner's uh, still got about eight minutes left in this flight and hasn't even uh, uh, begun deploying its heat shield yet. That'll that'll start here in just the next few minutes. Uh, still about three minutes away for the before the first parachutes begin to deploy. And of course, before that, we'll see the forward heat shield come off. But everything going well. Teams here on the ground seeing good data. And hopefully we'll get a better and better view as it gets closer. And that shot there on the left side of your screen now from the ground tracker. So we have two views now of Starliner as it makes its final approach to its landing zone there in White Sands, New Mexico. And the team uh, here in the in Mission Control reporting that they've heard from the landing and recovery teams that they're also seeing the Starliner. They'll have, of course, the front row seats, but we'll try and piggyback on that uh, with these views that we're getting. We are just under seven minutes away from landing.
Switching back to this graphic for just a moment as we wait for the forward heat shield deploy. And we are starting to get a more clear view of Starliner now. We should be seeing the forward heat shield deploy here pretty quickly. And the forward heat shield has now jettisoned. That heat shield protected the spacecraft through those thermal loads during re-entry. And drugs are out. Two drug parachutes slowing Starliner's speed and drag. They're going to reef to a wider opening and start, slow Starliner down enough for the main chutes to deploy in less than a minute. Main parachute deploy just about 30 seconds away. view here from the ground tracker. And mains are now out. We see three parachutes coming out here. Starliner has another 8,000 feet toward the landing. Those three parachutes are starting to inflate now. You can see them right there on your screen. And the main parachutes are reefing open right there. Continuous slowing Starliner down. Three good main parachutes, looking good. Starliner will be uh, drifting down for another two and a half or so minutes before it makes its touchdown, but all going smoothly. And we didn't just hear the rotation handle was released. That will uh, help level out the capsule before a touchdown. And there goes the base heat shield right there in front of you. It just jettisoned. You can see it falling away from the spacecraft. It will reveal the airbags that will cushion Starliner's landing. And those airbags are now inflating. Starliner is 2 minutes 40 seconds from landing. Actually closer to 2 minutes now. You can see those airbags right there on your screen, fully inflated, looking good. Those will come in real handy when we have crew on board for the crew flight test of Starliner in a few months, help ensure that the crew gets a nice, soft uh, touchdown. And those bags are filled with nitrogen as they guide Starliner safely back to the desert floor. Flight controllers here in the room reporting good airbags. Everything going exactly how we want to hear it. We are just coming up on about one minute away from touchdown there in White Sands, New Mexico. Exact touchdown time will vary a little bit depending on the winds at the landing site, but everything's going smoothly. And I bet the teams there at the landing site are enjoying this view.
continuing to see views from the ground trackers on, on site uh, in New Mexico. Just and seconds left. You can left. see the mountains coming into frame there. We're getting very close to the ground. And touchdown Starliner. We're touching down in the desert of New Mexico, marking the completion of orbital flight test two. And that touchdown coming at 5.49 p.m. Central Time, almost exactly six days into the mission. Just a beautiful touchdown in White Sands this evening. Our landing recovery teams will now wait for clearance before making their way to the vehicle. And we can hear some clapping and cheering in the other room. And we are going to go live to our team now that is out there right at the landing zone, getting getting close. And we have NASA's Dan Hewitt and Boeing's Rosa Bonuelos. Guys, how does it look from the ground? Thanks, Lauren. It's hard to describe the feeling that the team here is, is going through. Again, we just saw those beautiful red, white, and blue parachutes oh, deploy. We we're able to visually see the forward heat shield. Um, I'm sorry, the base heat shield also jettison and, and you know, uh, open those um, airbags when obviously they fill with nitrogen. So we're on the move. We're in the blue team vehicle. Again, we're driving in parallel to the um, historical runway here for the Columbia shuttle landing. Um, again, where the first stop is going to be the 500 foot mark. Um, we're driving pretty slow here, about 25 miles um, along the, the white sand, gypsum um, sand. Uh, once we, we get to that 500 mark, um, the first team will move uh, into the first thing that will move into the 120 foot mark will be the goal team and then we'll do that they will do that first visual assessment before they give the clear uh, for the rest of the team to approach the crew module after that we have the silver team who will uh, strongly stabilize the vehicle um, it will be a Sante command to power down and they will also um, Recover, uh, or recover the parachutes. They will also recover and save any dose and parts. And then after that team, we have um, our team, which again, we're gonna try to attempt to give you um, some of those live looks as we get closer to the crew module. Um, and then proceeding that, we have the green team who will uh, provide ground and cooling uh, to the vehicle, which is really important to keep those precise safe from overheating. Um, and then we have the red team who is mainly made out of the Boeing uh, medical personnel. And then we have uh, the hatch opening and then any of the cargo um, removal. Again, we're driving pretty slowly. We're heading to the crew module and an upwind direction, and this is to keep the, the team safe and away from any potential hazards um, as we approach. Again, the crew module uses a hypergolic propellant that when it does turn into vapor, it can be very toxic, so we take that very ser seriously. Um, we Safety is the number one um, concern and priority for the flight crew and from the team here on the ground. So when the gold team does arrive, they will be uh, monitoring that uh, throughout the whole upper Again, the first stop is the 500 foot mark, and um, again, if you, if you hear the rush in my voice, you definitely a, a, a sight to see um, a lot from, for all of the uh, going team here. It's definitely a proud moment. And hey, I don't have a whole lot else to add. It was pretty surreal as uh, Starliner just almost seemed to uh, materialize in thin air directly above us. We were able to see it come down under both strokes, see those deploy, uh, and see all three good mates. Uh, we were treated to uh, what I believe was a sonic boom or that may have been uh, some of the pyro events, but uh, that kind of announced Starliner's arrival to the desert here for us. Uh, and so as Rosa said, we're, we're on our way in. Uh, as we get closer, we're going to get closer also to a lot of our transmitting hardware, so we'll be able to bring you some reviews. views. I uh, might even have an eye in the sky uh, as the teams move in around Starliner. So we'll talk to you real soon as we get in closer. Great to have Starliner back on planet Earth. Can't wait to see it up close uh, and get the teams. And it looks like it's coming right into view for us. So we are, we are still about a kilometer or more away uh, continuing to close in. And we'll be, be bringing you a lot closer views real soon. Just as Dan mentioned, we can we can now see uh, the two module side ahead of us. Like we can visually see it, and it's definitely a great sight to see. So, Lauren, we'll toss it back to you, and we'll come back to you as soon as we can establish a, a speed again. 
That was Dan Hewitt and Rosa Buenuelos from uh, NASA and Boeing respectively giving us a report from the convoy currently making their way out to Starliner uh, as we speak. You heard them say that they were able to hear the sonic booms as uh, Starliner came in for its landing at 5.49 p.m. Central and we are seeing uh, some views from uh, from cameras there on site. Uh, some of the same ones I think that gave us the, the views as it was as it was coming down as well. And here's a piece of information that I know a lot of people on our team will be really happy to hear. Uh, we are told that Starliner landed about three-tenths of a mile southeast of the landing site, which is basically a bullseye. You can see those uh, airbags that we talked out, talked about earlier that are, are um, intended to give crew on board when we have them, a nice uh, soft landing. All uh, deployed as, as planned. That's going to be one of the things the teams are checking on as they do arrive at the landing site. We've got, uh, as you heard, um, the, the uh, Dan and Rosa mentioning we've got a, a pretty big group of people who are making their way out there because it's a pretty big job to recover a spacecraft uh, once it is touched down from space. And we're also hearing from here on the uh, from here in Mission Control that the post-landing power down of Starliner is in work. That's one of the key uh, milestones in uh, getting the Starliner ready for its recovery. And our team just checked the cabin temperature inside. It is 74 degrees right now. Much more comfortable than our team out there in the desert. <laughs> And you may have noticed just a few seconds after Starliner made its touchdown, the main chutes fall away from the spacecraft, and that just uh, keeps those chutes from catching any wind that could drag the capsule, which obviously makes things easier for the landing team as they begin to uh, make their way toward the vehicle and start their procedures. Once again, if you missed it, uh, the Starliner touched down at 5.49 p.m. Central Time. That's 4.49 p.m. Mountain Time. Crew on board the International Space Station was watching as it touched down, giving it uh, one last proper send-off. Now we are just waiting for the recovery teams to get out to the vehicle. You can see, I think, it uh, looks like we've got video from one of the cars here on the bottom right-hand side of the screen as they're making their way out. We last heard from them a couple minutes ago that they were still about a kilometer away, so they should be arriving pretty quickly. And then they'll begin the, uh, the long uh, process of getting the Starliner ready to return home to Florida. One of the major benefits of being able to land on land like this is not having to battle that uh, harsh salt water that could be, you know, uh, have an impact on the spacecraft in the water. And of course, this is a reusable spacecraft. We plan to reuse it up to 10 times. We place a great deal of emphasis on testing our systems on the ground and in space uh, before our first crewed flight test, so our teams have learned a tremendous amount from this mission. And we have also ex extensively tested our parachutes and airbags before this flight, so very happy to see them uh, work nominally and as expected. Starting to see uh, some of the recovery teams arrive. The very first vehicle that we will see on site is the command vehicle. They are at the front of the convoy and where the recovery ops leader and recovery director 
who are in char charge of the entire operation will uh, wait to go in. Power down of Starliner is still uh, going on, uh, getting everything turned off so that the team here in Houston can turn the vehicle officially, the spacecraft officially, over to the recovery team, who we can see is just arriving here in uh, the top right-hand corner view. The recovery uh, Recovery director is uh, in the command vehicle, along with the recovery ops leader. Now you see a lot of that team starting to arrive on site there. And our gold team will be the first to arrive up to the vehicle. As you heard Nan and Rosa say, they are uh, the first to the vehicle, so they do a sniff test for hydrogen, making sure that there's none of that in the air that could hurt um, any of the recovery team members. They'll be wearing hazmat suits to protect them from any they might find. Hopefully that'll be clear, though, and then the uh, rest of the team members can, be be can begin moving in. Those hazmat suits are there to prevent exposure to hypergolic propellants, and hydrazine is used as a propellant, and if it turns into a vapor, it can be very toxic, so um, they use special sensors to sniff for it, and then they're able to notify the rest of the convoy when it's safe. That team will also check the wind to make sure that the entire landing and recovery team is staged up range from the direction the wind is blowing just for an added uh, set of protection there. We also are starting to get some photos from the members of the recovery team. We've got one here to show from you from Bill Ingalls, NASA photographer, as Starliner was making its way down for that 5.49 p.m. Central Time landing. This again is uh, one of the photos just coming in from the recovery team. That's a good uh, indication that they are getting set up and starting to, to get a good connection back to us. Hopefully we'll get a few more updates from them as we uh, go on through the recovery process. And just a beautiful sight there to see those three red, white, and blue parachutes fully open. That gives you a patriotic feeling to see that there and, and to think about really um, the fact that we now have a, a successful mission and um, just kind of, you know, think about what this means for our country. Absolutely. may be able to hear some clapping here in the room in Mission Control. This team definitely feeling good about their uh, six day long uh, mission that they've been supporting, getting Starliner up to the International Space Station and then safely back for this landing in New Mexico. Seeing here a video, a shot from a, a drone on site with the recovery team. Much, uh, much clearer than our other view. Very nice. Yeah, we're getting now some close-up views of Starliner there on the ground. <laughs> and back with the recovery team now. Again, they are getting a, starting to get staged. And we'll be taking control of the vehicle now. Just like we have a flight director here in Mission Control, there's a recovery director on site there who will be leading operations.
And as I mentioned earlier, when Starliner returned from its first flight, uh, we did uh, notice two black stripes up the sides of the spacecraft. We've seen those as well on this time. And that just indicates that the heat was ablated as intended. We expected to see that. It's a good thing to see that. It means that that ablative heat shield did its job. Blade of heat shields uh, wear away with the heat and take the heat with them rather than letting it transfer to the inside of the crew module where the crew uh, needs to be protected. And you can start to see there some of the gold team making its way out of the vehicle and will soon be coming over to the spacecraft to begin its checks. And we're going to go live now back to NASA's Dan Hewitt and Boeing's Rosa Banuelas, who are live on the scene. Dan Hewitt uh, coming to you guys live now. So we're just about 500 feet away. Uh, and the convoy has paused. And as we talked about, so the gold team is in there right now. Uh, they do a sweep up close around the capsule looking for any hydrazine fumes. A uh, hydrazine, it's a hypergolic fuel. Uh, the ca Starliner capsule uses it for its reaction control thrusters, which are only used during that reentry period to control yaw pitch roll. They go in, make sure there aren't any leaks, any fumes, anything like that, before the rest of the team start to make their way. That's right, Dan. As you can see, probably in your camera views, they're dressed in hazmat suits, um, and they're going to do an initial sweep. They're doing that right now as they're walking around the crew module. You can see those airbags are inflated, and they're going to take their time to do that. Obviously, it is we want to keep the team safe, and once they do that, they're going to give the next team that go to proceed, um, which is going to be the silver team. And again, they're going to ground and stabilize the vehicle and make it um, safe for the crew to actually touch uh, touch the crew module as well. Um, so we're going to continue to see this um, live. Uh, as you can see, the parachutes are to our direction, to the left here. And the team that will be safing and uh, recovering those parachutes will be the silver team as well. So when it's their turn to come in, you'll see them working off to the side, gathering those parachutes, doing their assessment as well. Yeah, and they're going to be collecting up that base heat shield, which actually landed uh, probably only about 200 feet off to our right. So that's super close. So uh, if we were able to get some views of that on OFT1, and we'll do our best to get you some views of that as well. Um, so after Silver Team's able to do that, you're going to start to see a lot of the convoy moving in. Uh, we've got a green team, which I don't know if we've touched on yet, uh, but they're bringing a lot of equipment with them. They're going to put up an environmental enclosure. It kind of looks like a bounce house. Uh, it's just to go around Starliner, helps to provide it some extra cooling. Uh, and also just protect it from the elements as we're out here. As again, this vehicle is going to be reused. Any steps we can take to just kind of isolate it from the environment will help in that refurbishment. And they're also uh, going to be setting up uh, an HVAC system, providing some active cooling uh, to the capsule as once it's powered down, it's not using any of that active cooling on board. And I did just get word that we are going to have the silver team move in to cut the riser, and that is that connection that is still connected to, to the parachute. So you will probably see that in your shot. Um, it's a, it's practically like a string, and they will be going in there and doing that procedure um, as part of their recovering operations, uh, recovery operations as well. So we're going to continue to see um, the different teams do their um, different procedures, and we'll report as we see different um, the different steps here. Yeah, we've got a, a big squad also, the red team. They'll be bringing in probably some of the most visual hardware, a lot of the really big stuff. Uh, they've got what's called a map, a mobile access platform. It will look very similar to just a big yellow platform with some stairs. That's what's going to give them direct access to that hatch, uh, as your hatch lead is also on the red team. Uh, they're also going to be driving up the medical truck. Uh, obviously, we don't have any crew on board today, uh, but we're going through all of the motions of this uh, to practice just for when we are flying crew. And so they'll back that medical truck up, and that's what we're going to be using uh, once we have crew on board. Uh, that's going to be kind of their first steps out of the capsule and into there. Also, um, the hazmat has been complete. Everything is nominal. Again, this team did that first initial assessment, and they're going to continue to monitor for any potential hypergolic leaks. Again, making sure the team is safe out there um, to, from the crew module. And so everything's looking great out here. It's still very warm. As you saw us before, we're wearing sunglasses. It's really bright out here. And um, so we're protecting our eyes. We're keeping safe, um, drinking lots of water um, as we, uh, again, welcome 
Starliner home from its orbital flight test two. We're, we're going to go ahead and toss it on back as they're completing that assessment. Uh, we're going to get back into our cars and be able to move in a little bit closer, and then we'll rejoin you very shortly. And you may have noticed there, as that drone flies over the base heat shield that really dropped away uh, not too far from where Starliner landed. You may have heard a lot of clapping in the background here. Boeing and NASA leadership have made their way into mission control and there is quite the celebration going on in here. Flight Director Mike Lammers congratulating his team on a successful flight and touchdown. Again, that came at 5.49, 5.49 p.m. Central Time. And you can see our team in the hazmat suits there and as part of the gold team. Again, they are making their way up to do the sniff test. A lot of times when you hear sniff test, you imagine they will actually be sniffing with their own nose, but that is not the case. Uh, there is a reason they are in hazmat suits. They have a device that actually performs that sniff test for them. As Dan Hewitt mentioned, the ground team is now off and moving in closer with that uh, sniff test coming through all clear. You can see them performing that now. Once they do uh, move in, I think the silver team is up next, right? Yeah, that's right. It's the silver team's job to ground the vehicle. Starliner will be powered down, but there could be some residual um, electricity. So before anyone can touch the vehicle, they will ground and discharge it. Just a great shot there. As I mentioned earlier, um, during our last flight, we landed during the dark and um, in the middle of the night. And so this is the first time that we've been able to see just such clear pictures of Starliner's crew capsule there in the desert of white sands. You can see that black stripe I mentioned, which is just um, kind of a badge of honor. It, it, lets us know that um, the engineering done to protect that spacecraft during the hottest part of its reentry um, did its job. Another photo coming in from that, uh, I guess the blue team, which is the communications team that's on site. This one again from Bill Ingalls, a NASA photographer who was part of that uh, the landing convoy getting a, looks like a, a photo just seconds before touchdown there. And a beautiful sight just to see Starliner there um, with the backdrop of the mountains. I have a feeling this is a picture that a lot of people will have up on their wall. We will stay with our team out on the, at the landing site until the ha uh, hatch is opened. That will be done by the red team, so that's the team we'll pay most attention to. And they are mostly made up of fire rescue, Boeing's fire rescue. The mobile access platform will get backed up to the hatch on the crew module, and that's able to give the team access there. If we did have astronauts on board today, this is the part when they would start to exit and be taken directly into the medical truck for any post-landing medical checkups. But we we still have a few astronauts teams who could be on board. Uh, I think Butch Wilmore is there with the team. He's uh, one of the first up uh, to, to fly on board Starliner, getting a good look at uh, what he could expect from a Starliner touchdown. Butch telling us that he was very jealous of Rosie getting to ride in the commander's seat today and uh, I'm sure he will have some more words for her once he uh, gets to get up close there to the spacecraft.
Definitely seeing some of those teams begin moving in closer now. You may be able to tell some of the flags that are on each of those trucks that differentiate which team we're talking about. As we've mentioned many times, they are um, designated by color. And so that'll give you a good indication of which team's turn it is to uh, come in and do their part to get the spacecraft ready for more folks to come in and eventually open that hatch. It's only been 26 minutes now since Starliner touched down, so you can get an idea of how quickly those uh, that uh, landing and recovery team can move in for a land recovery. Already through that hydrazine sniff test that we've been talking about and uh, getting ready to move on to the, to the Silver Team's grounding uh, electrical test. Team here in the room has already uh, handed control over to the recovery director who is on site, and now they've got responsibility for Starliner. spacecraft landed just three-tenths of a mile southeast of the landing site today, which they consider pretty much a bullseye, exactly where we want to put her down in the desert. Of course, being so important that we're able to show that our autonomous uh, spacecraft can perform as we plan.
And we have confirmation now that the silver team has been able to ground the vehicle and ground cooling has now been established. Our NASA and Boeing colleagues are still in a holding pattern right now as they wait to uh, get the go ahead that it is safe to move closer to the spacecraft. And once they do that and we establish a, a shot with them, we will go back out to them live to get an update on what they can see from their perspective.